of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just, you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They they, they, they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television, and they're... If people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep at cheap. Guys, this is what I tell you all the time, and I'm sharing this for a reason. I was once that desperate, that way, exactly the person he's talking about. I broke my back at a very young age and was put at a predisposition at the age of 23. No fault of my own. And I lived a life of sorrow. You know, I didn't think there was another way. I was very, very depressed. It was a, it was a time of sorrow, a time of reflecting, but I was doing it in the wrong way. I was using negative energy, and I wasn't looking at the benefits right in front of me. And once I started to, I started taking the time to learn. I started to learn ability, started to learn skills I never had the time to do when I was working. And then when I was 31, or no, not even 31, about 31, I, I was started working again. And bearing cable line shit that I wasn't even supposed to do because I needed to build enough money and I had to buy enough time to build my skill. And then I started learning the technical analysis. My first stop was on Twitch and it was, I did it in mobile gaming because I wanted to, I knew I had an ability and I had to learn how to talk to people and I had to learn the social media. So I did that for a year while I was bearing cable lines and I learned how Twitch worked. I learned how to talk to people. I learned how to, you know, advertise my content. And I knew that's not what I wanted, but I knew I had a love for the chart. So then I started to learn every single day. I put so many hours a day in my free time. Even going in between jobs, I would be looking at the chart, trying to figure it out, trying to understand. I'd be reading every single definition, not knowing what the fuck I was looking at. You know, and then it came a time where I was like, you know what? This isn't working anymore. And I finally said, I'm doing it. And I, it was the time um, after Julie's accident. And I, I taught myself enough about the charts. I went on YouTube. But I first started making money by living that lifestyle. I, I quit my job. I didn't go back. I refused the unemployment. And I'm glad I did. It was the best decision I ever made because it put me in a spot where I was forced to have to make money. I was forced to have to come up with something. It came to a point where I started driving for Uber to make money. Because you had to have some kind of income. So, and then the charts started working out. I started to be able to read the charts even better. So, it got to a point where every waning moment, I was doing something related to the technical analysis to the point to now, where 24-7, it's the charts, it's doing my YouTube, it's talking to you guys, it's trying to update you, keep everybody on the same page, running the telegrams, also doing a Twitch now, you know, having two partner stations. But you know what it is? It's more than just time. It's more than just determination. You have to be dedicated. You have to dedicate. If you're not dedicated and you won't put the time into yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. So I want you guys to continue to listen to this, but there is a way. You don't have to live this way. If you hate your life, if you don't think there's a way out, there is. I promise you, I'm a perfect example. It doesn't happen overnight. I'm tired as hell and I work harder than I ever have. But you know what? I love every single minute of it. I love every single one of you. And guess what? I built my own brand. I'm working for myself and nobody can ever take that away from me. Watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. For making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that and you sell that furniture, look man, if you can do that, you could you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it and then it's done and you get the satisfaction and you sell it to someone and that pays your bills, that is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance and you know you're not really you know you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company this company is your future this kind of like you like 
kill me now. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else. And I hope they understand that they can. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that. There's Guys, the, what he says is so true. When I was at my worst, I'm literally working seven days a week, 12 hours, 15, 18 hours a day bearing cable lines. You know, that was hard work, not talking about working by myself. When we had two man days, I'd have to be working with a ditch witch and I'd be going under concrete with 25 foot fucking rods. It was hard work. And there were days when it was literally, I have to put gas in my car so I can't eat on an 18 hour shift. And I had many of days like that and it would suck putting out so much energy not being able to eat and just sitting there and knowing there's a better way knowing that i'm better than that but you have to put yourself in a situation where you're, you're so you put it all on the line you have to believe in yourself my credit cards were maxed out it didn't matter how much i worked i was i had less money it didn't matter how much i did things were getting worse and worse and to a point to where it was either i took a chance on myself or it was over and whatever that means i don't know but i wasn't willing to go that route because one time in my life I had a perfect failure. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. I lived in an apartment for three years after I broke my back. Um, and it got to a point to where I couldn't afford to live there. And I got evicted, basically. Evicted out of the fucking apartment. And I was on rock bottom. Moved back in with my mom. And for like seven months or eight months, I, I that, that was a turning point in my life in my mid to late 20s. And... You know, it made me realize you're only young once. You have to get it together. And if you don't, you're going to live this life of uh, solitude. I mean, you're going to live this life of just dormancy. And you're going to live on somebody else's watch. And you're just not going to be able to do what you need. If you guys haven't noticed, this is not a technical analysis update. This is an update. This is a, a motivational style. Because everybody needs to hear it sometimes. Sometimes we need to get away from the chart and understand there are other ways. But you have to put the time into yourself. I dedicate every day towards myself and it's given me a life that I can at least live right now comfortably be home with Julie the kids as you know she can't walk she's been through five surgeries and if I wasn't home it would be hell so it's each day though every day you wake up you know when you wake up instead of literally this is how easy it is guys when I first wake up you know what I used to do I used to get up and I would either turn on the ps4 for two three hours when nobody was up, I'd be like, all right, this is my time. I can play the PlayStation. You know, I'm a dad of three. I've got, um, you know, I got a house where I take care of Julie. And I'd get up and I'd be like, all right, it's 730. I'm going to play my game. Well, you know what happened? I started this YouTube instead of playing the game in the mornings. That snowballed. And this is, you know, just over a year ago now, but it snowballed into something beautiful. And I had all the abilities. I just lacked the time. But guess what? I didn't really lack the time. The way I put my time, what I was doing with my energy, my assertion, the way I asserted my skills, I wasn't doing it properly because I was sitting playing my game. Sure, I was great at whatever I was doing. I was in no man's sky and I had uncovered so much shit and developed and uncovered and explored and it was awesome. But at the end of the day, what was I really doing? I was living in a virtual world with no return. No, It didn't do anything for me. I had these fake awards. Sure, it makes a man feel good on the inside. You're in the top two person. Who gives a shit? No, what you need to do is you need to turn the PlayStation off. You need to put the phone down unless you're watching this and you're trying to learn. If you're just doing this just for shits and giggles, maybe this isn't the best thing for you to watch. My technical analysis. But if you're really putting it toward something, it's really something. So I suggest you put down the PlayStation controller or the Xbox or get off the computer gaming or whatever the case may be. Unless it's a passion of yours and you're going to use it in some way. Or you're secure in what you're doing right now. If you're trying to find a way and you say you don't have time and you're sitting on the PlayStation, right? You're sitting on the computer or the Xbox. You have time. You're just not using it properly. I used to be that way. I wasted years feeling sorry for myself after I broke my back. Years. And I had to. I had to learn the misery. I had to have the defeat and I had to feel the loss. If you don't know what loss feels like, you're screwed. Because you don't ever want to have that feeling again. You want, you do not want to go back to failure, but you have to fail to understand. If you're handed everything and then you fail, it's over. You haven't built the backbone. That's why early when you're young, that's where you build it. Now I'm 38 years old and I still feel blessed and young enough 
to have figured it out and be able to do and live a life of solitude now. And what I mean by that is I get to live on my own terms. And that comes at a small step of each and every one of you who joined Tom's Army for $9.99 a month. I have 259 or 260 members, and that helps me be able to do what I do. Outside of the charts, it gives me a secure income month by month, as long as I have enough members, and I continue to dedicate and put the time in, I know it'll only get better and grow, and I want to thank each and every one of you, but now let's get back to this, because it really is motivating, and this, I don't know how long this video is going to be. There's no hope, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, there's no rainbow, and if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting, but if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, feed, I, I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing that's not encouraged they, they, what's encouraged is go find a job what's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just f and jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like for the rest of your life because you need a job because you're in debt because you have credit cards because you have student loans because that's what everybody does and so you do it too that's what's wrong you, you have an apartment you have to pay for you have a car you leased you have a wife that you have to feed you have a child you have to raise you have to you have your mortgage you have your this you have your that and that's where it all comes from well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. That's when you have your options. Well, your options are severely limited the more you gather responsibilities. Like, And to his point right there, and we're going to end this shortly because I do actually want to get into the chart for a minute. But to go to that point, I didn't have my first child until I was 35. And it was by design. I have two stepkids now, but by design, I didn't have my first child until I was 35 because I wasn't responsible enough. I didn't have enough. I, if I would have had a child before I figured it out, I would have been so screwed. And I actually had my son as I was figuring it out. I was still working my cable job, but I was in transition. The last, the last year I ever worked cable was the year my son was born. That was my last summer I ever did it because in the winters we couldn't work because of... Uh, and that's the thing. I was off in the winters. What did I do? I blew it. Until the year before I quit, I decided to take a chance and go on Twitch to try to learn the system. And if it wasn't for that one year of doing Twitch about... I think I did it for about a year. If I wouldn't have did Twitch for that year and learned what I learned, I would have never been able to figure out YouTube. There's no, there's no way. So there's no time like the present, you know, it... Literally, look yourself in the mirror if you don't like what you see. You know, tomorrow is a new day. And right now, the people who say, I'll do it tomorrow, they're never going to do it. You have to do it now. Do it now. Look at yourself and say, I'm doing it fucking now and there's no excuses. If I had to, as a 51-year-old father of three, married man, pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz... If I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand-up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21, when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you, you ever get where you want to go. You have to, you have to take a path that's dangerous. And most people want to take the safe path. The safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe they but can. You have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan. And you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever shit job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you f***ed up and you got yourself stuck. So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends yes. on it. And whether it is you're trying to be an... 
Guys, that's why you ask me why I do this every day with no breaks. I do it as if there's no other choice. There's no other way. And this is literally all or nothing for me. I am all in. That's why I think I'm the best in the business besides just the tech. I am all in. If it's not for this, I have nothing. Just remember that. If not for this, I've put all my eggs into one basket, into myself. And this is where I do best. So if you can't get behind somebody who puts their life behind it and puts everything they know and their integrity and their name, you know, you're not watching the right person. Author, and you're gonna, you're gonna, if you're gonna try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day, plus commuting, plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have, whatever time that you have, you have to attack like you're trying to save the world. You're trying to save your life. You don't want to drown. That one and a half hours a day that you have to write, God damn, you better be caffeinated and motivated. You got to go. You got to get after it. And you got to have discipline. That's most people don't have those things. Most people don't understand what it's like to, to really go for something. And to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific. I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples Examples of where you've uh, yeah, before. what not to do. Yeah, don't and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. Good evening, 5.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. I'm T-Speaker 222XRP, future millionaire with the side bet on XLM and future Digibyte OG. So, hope that guys, in the beginning, for any of you who don't know anything personally about me, that helped you uh, get a little bit of, you know, understand me a little bit better. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of my audience, and that is to the core, to the truth, and to, from the heart of why I do what I do. I know some of you like Joe Rogan, I'm sure. I love Joe. If you haven't checked out the Joe Rogan experience, I encourage you to go through each and every one of those and watch them and see just, it's unbelievable actually. It's truly unbelievable when you start to actually get in tune. I made some great plays today on bat. I, I don't want to say too much about it, um, but on a volatile trading I don't generally like to use leverage or use the uh, futures, but when it's a weird trading day, I do. I'm not going to say the amounts I used, but I bought bad at, I did a short at 74. It was actually a pretty awesome play. I did it on this candle right here. It was at 74.32, and I wrote it down to 73.98, sold it. It went a little bit lower. Bought it at 73.92 and I'm still in that position and I'm riding it up right now and it's been a spectacular play so I'm pretty happy about that like spectacular play um I mean fuck it it's my telegram or this is my show I don't author I don't advise you to ever use leverage but sometimes I just I see something in it you know, I don't want you guys to think I'm bullshitting you, but I bought this at $73.94 on the way back up. So it's doing pretty good right now. It's up 11%. Um, I really don't have a target. I have a stop loss set on it for about 73 or now I put it at 74.08 because my logic was after this reversal candle, it shouldn't come down any lower than 74.19 and... We don't want it to uh, break down too low to where I'm not going to get any money. So now, it's up above. My thing is, in the 30-minute, my whole reasoning was on this 30-minute candle. I bought it when it was just a below here. 
you're above here. And then when it started coming down, I knew it was going to come and test the support. So that's why I did it. And it, it just ended up being a spectacular play over the last hour and a half. So now it looks like I picked a beautiful candle and it's actually reversing. I mean, it looks like I picked it at a perfect time off of that support. And I was able to make like 70 something dollars or like, what was it? 14% because I had 70 something dollars lost last time, but it was like a 14% move on my leverage. And then I was able to buy back in on the ride back up because I'm like, oh, it doesn't look good here. I'm selling. And then I waited and I seen it and I'm like, this is it. Because I was going to buy it to go long at first, but then I'm like, it's got to go down first. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to ride it down. I never do this. So I did. I played it both ways. So now what we're looking at with Bitcoin as I ramble on, see if you can't be passionate about what you do, you know. So Bitcoin, we're on the top of the 20 day here. And this is the interesting part. Because I think we have to make a small playback up, and we've been talking about this. Is it 39997 I don't know. I, I mean, generally, you would think it would come a little bit higher than that. We have a W. We're sideways. I, I would anticipate this to at least come up here. If not, test this second drop point. Because we're not. I don't think we're going all the way back up to 42976 I just think we dropped way too fast. So we're probably going to have to come back test this. You got a lot of holders up here. I, th I think 40,303 is a, is a good spot. Well, that's too low. I think 40,552 would be a decent area if we can break 39,850. My personal opinion, I'm sticking to it. Um, that's why I keep saying if you're in a position, I would probably wait it out until we come through the smaller uh, support areas. Hold on one sec, guys. I got to answer this. Wow, call back. I'll put you, I'll pause this.